Well, since it's the anniversary of my most popular video and Total Drama hasn't made any major announcements concerning the new season, it's time to talk Total Drama again. Uh, again. I was going to talk about World Tour and how I think the fan base rates the season a bit too high, but in writing notes for that video, I realized I would have to do a lot of backtracking, which meant that if I wanted to talk about the storylines in World Tour, I'd have to talk about the ones in, um, uh, ah, dang, what's that season called? Oh yeah, Total Drama Action. I was so focused on diving into the popular seasons that I honestly forgot the action even existed. And after re-watching it and browsing through the TD Reddit, it's safe to say many people didn't have much to say about Total Drama Action. At least not compared to what came after or before it. And it's not like it's an awful or even a bad season, but it's not particularly memorable in the way that other TD seasons are. It doesn't have any significant arcs or gimmicks other than a location change and a few or less characters. And the drama compared to Island feels super dialed back. Unsurprisingly, there's not a lot of coverage on the season, but I think there's a bit to discuss with Total Drama's most underdeveloped chapter. So this week, we're going to be addressing the sophomore slump that is Total Drama Action. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't. I know my upload schedule's been shaky, but we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. With that out the way, I'm Flux Guys, and let's see how Total Drama Action failed. <laughs> Every season of Total Drama is reliant on its cast above everything. After all, what good are all these story elements if your characters aren't enjoyable? Pocket tail. Go! Anyway, Action saw a lot of TDI players getting benched, 7 of the 22. And while this lean on fan favorites plus a couple of extras might seem like a good thing, I think it ends up kneecapping the season's storytelling. For one, it meant that there had to be a lot of non-elimination episodes to keep the 14 players lasting the entire season. They had to add the Aftermath show, which was just a love and hip hop style replay of the events from previous episodes. It never amounts to anything interesting, the contestants forced to sit out usually don't speak at all. The show just equates to Jeff and a reluctant Bridget asking intrusive questions to their quote unquote friends. There's also a ton of reward challenges, but these episodes tend to have the least amount of suspense and drama since the characters and audience already know that no one's going to be kicked off anyway. As forgettable and dry as characters like Katie and Sadie were, they served a purpose in the sense that while other characters were having their own arcs, someone could still be eliminated in the process to keep the game moving. Action stops and starts so much that the eliminations aren't as thrilling or even shocking anymore. It moves so slowly to the point that when somebody finally does go, you're sitting there like, oh, they're gone? Man, I, I mean, they didn't do much anyway. You know what's weird? I already don't miss him! Most of the characters reprise their island rules, but in a new season where the stakes seem a lot lower, you've got to do something new. They try to give lesser characters a chance, but they still can't help but use what made Island so successful. Owen stays in the game way longer than he should have, considering all he does is eat and fart this time around. And for some reason, they bring him back to cause drama since the show doesn't have enough. At least they're right about something. So he randomly returns just to add nothing into the episode he's eliminated in. It's almost like they could have added one of the bench players in this place. Izzy is still as crazy, if not more than before, but since everyone's already used to her, all her nonsense just gets an eye roll. And she comes back. Twice. Again. Because if it worked once, why not do it over? They even return back to the island several times for challenges. All signs point towards the writers not wanting to completely let go of what works. Going back to the previous setting three, three times, times, reusing characters without giving them something to do, using prior plot elements with little to no change. Sure, Island was a success, but how long can you last eating off the same leftovers? But don't worry, the season isn't totally the same as its previous entry. They definitely changed some things, though I wouldn't say for the better. What's poi, you ask? Poi is a Hawaiian superfood from the root of the taro. It's vitamin rich and hypoallergenic, making it the world's most effective substitute for breast milk. While this season's character development is nowhere near as season ruining as All Stars, there are still a lot of characters in action that are either shells of their former island selves or have no depth to their personality at all. All three of the previous season's primary relationships crash and burn in one way or another. Jeff and Bridget get reduced to making out whenever they see each other, which was somewhat disappointing after seeing how enjoyable they were individually. I guess the writers needed a reason to put them on the pointless aftermath shows where Jeff acts uncharacteristically like Chris, and Bridget tries to understand why, but they could have found a better way to kick them off the show. Despite the two being likable characters, giving them another season would be difficult since their stereotypes were never really expanded on. Duncan and Courtney's interactions this season are complicated too. They range from being competitive to being in love to being competitive again. Still, Courtney's character is so entangled in her trying to win that her relationship with Duncan and jealousy of Gwen never really gets talked about. Well, not until World Tour, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Speaking of Gwen, her and Trent's romance gets the worst end of the stick. The season 1 power couple gets trashed in a matter of episodes. We didn't get to see much of them together, but Trent seemed like a pretty standard character on Island. Not sure what happened between seasons though, seeing as now he's super obsessed with Gwen, throwing challenges for her and basically begging for her validation in his short time on the show. 
He's also got his random number 9 obsession which came out of nowhere and was pretty poorly explained in the useless aftermath shows. Okay maybe I'm hating a little bit too hard in the aftermath shows, the ones in world tour were better but the ones in action were just so boring. Everyone's got their own issues as well. DJ goes from being a strong but quiet type to a soft mama's boy with no backbone. They try to fix this issue by putting DJ in an alliance with Chef to make him stronger but all that ends up happening is Chef telling DJ obvious things and DJ getting fewer lines. Plus the whole him being soft thing was an issue that they created. I already mentioned how Owen is reduced to being the fat guy who eats and farts. And Courtney is such a flip of her island self that they're practically different characters. Surprisingly she rooted for her team in island and was the stuck up type but loosened up around Duncan. The dynamic was pretty wholesome and despite how different their stereotypes were you could see how the two would match up. In action Courtney's whiny, annoying and only focuses on herself. Constantly complaining when things don't go her way, if someone she doesn't like wins, if Duncan says anything at all. Sorry, Courtney, it's not prize time yet. Make it prize time. I want a prize. I want a prize. I want a prize. I want candy. I want candy. Hey, nobody gives a shit what you want. Shut your mouth. And since the writers pretty much gave up on giving Alahant, I mean Justin, a chance to be a proper villain, Courtney takes up a majority of screen time as the main antagonist. But nobody's actually intimidated or scared by her. The only reason they want to vote Courtney off is that she's annoying. How do we get from the lovably hateable Heather to the scream or well most of her lines Courtney? The world may never know. I just found out I have a new neck modeling contract. Apparently I have excellent tendons. See? See? Check it out. You like that? While the things I mentioned before are flawed, they're not super irritating on their own. But a show like Total Drama not having a clearly defined antagonist-protagonist relationship cripples the season the most. Going back to CDR, the main character was obviously Gwen. She was arguably the most normal character and straight man to all the crazy teen stereotypes around every corner. Conversely, the main antagonist was obviously Heather. Mean, bossy, petty, willing to do it all to be the last one standing. Having Heather as the main villain gave the characters someone to stand up against. It also gave the audience someone to root for. It was really satisfying to see Owen and Gwen finally stick it to Heather after a season of her despicableness. But in action, neither role is filled, making for a really empty plot experience overall. There's no notable villain unless you count Justin or Courtney, and neither could fill that role that season 1 Heather or even the main villains that came after. The former being an underdeveloped Alejandro and used for more dumb comic relief, and the latter was only seen as a villain for being annoying and happening to win challenges. There's no notable main character either, neither finalist seems like the character to root for. Death's most defining traits are being nerdy and childish, something that other characters do way better than her. She's not primarily a threat throughout the season either. In fact, her presence in the finale is probably one of the most underwhelming in the series. Duncan makes it to the finale without learning anything or changing at all. Most of his screen time is spent terrorizing Harold, flirting with Courtney, or cracking one-liners. If anything, Harold or Courtney would have made a much more convincing rival than Beth. Since Beth and Duncan have no chemistry or real drive to win past just wanting to win. Gwen and Owen were both pretty warm characters and we knew how they'd spend the money based on the personalities we grew to love. Beth and Duncan remained essentially unchanged by the end of action. They try to establish that they might not be as harsh or as friendly as you think they are in the final aftermath show, but by that point it's already too late. Where was all this plot development when the season was happening? Why reduce it to an aftermath show? The finale has more to do with Chris and Chef than the finalists and to be fair the two are at their comedic peak in this season but it's not really their moment to be had. 26 half hour episodes and we know as much as about our two finalists as before the season even began. Reward challenges are such a waste of time. I wish we had a gilded Chris ceremony every night. Let's get on with it already so I can get my million bucks and get a decent makeover. The biggest crime that actually commits is just being deathly boring. The previous main points cultivate a teasy season with little to no suspense between episodes. Which really sucks because for all my criticisms in this video, I think the season has some good ideas following Island's enormous expectations. Beth and Lindsay existing without Heather and standing up for themselves, giving lesser characters more screen time and more prominent roles, and dialing back the crowd favorites. But the writers don't really expand on these archetypes past just mentioning that they could exist. Lindsay tries her hand at being a leader for a bit, but her and Beth are virtually unchanged from how they acted under Heather in season 1. Owen's jaw gets shattered and it has no bearing on the plot besides bearing him from one challenge. As dramatic as they try to make it, the show's had more impactful injuries before and after. DJ's alliance with Chef could have been interesting if it actually affected DJ at all or the game. DJ could have been playing completely normal and it would have made no difference in the plot. Hell, Chef's not even punished for helping DJ cheat so I'm sorry he didn't try to cheat with anyone else. Oh wait, things just sort of happen in this season without any kind of rhyme or reason. Well, I guess right there because I just run. If you want to fix Total Drama action, you wouldn't even really need to change that much. 
Add one or two more characters, maybe a Noah or Eva, someone to keep the first half of the season busy until Courtney arrives. Don't bring Owen back to the finals and use either Courtney, Harold, or Lindsay in the finale. Apparently Lindsay was meant to be the initial finalist, but since her voice actor wasn't available, she had to be written out in one of the worst ways possible. But in my opinion, Courtney or Harold would have made for much more convincing rivals based on how they all interact with the season. This is just assuming that Duncan still becomes a finalist, because let's face it, he's a writer's pet anyway, and he's gonna win at least once. And boom, those minor issues aren't as glaring because there's some kind of tension going on. I didn't even mention things like fixing Gwen and Trent's relationship or cutting characters like Beth and Izzy out early. There's a lot of potential with the group they chose, they just didn't choose to do anything with the cast besides hitting the same notes as Isla. With that being said, let's wrap this up. Getting kicked off the show may be the best thing that's ever happened to me. Now I can devote my time to something meaningful, like helping the poor. Look better! Action was so close to being exciting, but it played it too safe and gave us a lackluster season. It's the number one season that everyone wants to rewrite, right next to All Stars. And it's not hard to see why, the potential for ideas was everywhere, but instead of choosing to do something to bring the drama in total drama, the writers just decided to do nothing. But for as harsh as I am on total drama action, I'm kinda glad it ended up being average. It gave certain characters that much needed redemption, like Harold and Justin to an extent. It also gave Heather an off season of show time between being the villain on island and the anti-hero in World Tour. Plus, with the success of TDI, it was inevitable that they'd slip up somewhere, and in the grander scale of the series, action is nowhere near the worst it can get. Hopefully through analyzing all their faults in the previous seasons, Cake and TD will make this new era of Total Drama breathe new life into a series that's 15 years old at this point. They've already turned away a lot of heads with the announcements they've made so far, but I've still got hope for Total Drama. After all, I can't deny its impact on my childhood. We'll just have to cross our fingers and hope for a season like World Tour Island instead of All Stars of Pocketeo. Either way, I'll get to make a video about it when the season drops, so it's win-win for me. Catch you guys next time when we finally get to address the plain-sized elephant in the room. Take care, y'all.